Amari to do this. Like I didn't expect her to do this, and I just yeah. couldn't I couldn't help but laugh. And my sister's like, "Well, I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to get you to help me correct them, and you're laughing." I'm like. Oops, are they home? <laughs> are they listening on speakerphone? <laughs> <laughs> are they on speaker? You got me on speaker? <laughs> but no, luckily they were at school and not listening. There you go. But yeah, I mean, Jonah was angry with God because God wanted to save a people that were despicable to him. You know, mm-hmm. but let's let's flip the script yep. here. Because of our outward and continuous sin, yep. we're despicable to God. But yet he still loves us. And he still sent his son to us as a sacrifice, as that sacrificial lamb for us. You know, so when and, and if, yep. you, if you look at prayer, Jesus commands us to pray. You know, that is our telephone connection to Christ. You know, we pray whenever and wherever. And we have that direct connection with the father through the son. You know, and I love that. I love that mm-hmm. picture that, you know, Nathan uses marriage as as an um, example. But but the church is considered the bridegroom of Christ. So it's the same yep. concept. <laughs> and, I'm well, not... and, and I think, and I, and I think with that, you know, he says, um, as relational beings made in the image of God, we all recognize this vital aspect of intimate relationship. I think that intimate relationship as a pastor, you know, that is, that is the thing that I bump into, I, I would say more often than not, where people do not have intimate relationship with god mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They, they they don't it's like god is at a distance and or they or they have this image in their head of god being angry with them or that god doesn't doesn't love them or that god just is putting up with them right and and that and that is just it's so far from the truth um and, and as a but as a result of that they they lose intimacy and because they're, because they're afraid to pray. I don't know how many people, you know, that, that I minister to who say, well, God's got like, there, there are way bigger issues in the world. He doesn't need to hear about my little stuff. He doesn't need to hear about my little struggles. And it's like, no, absolutely. That's so not true. I want to hear when my kids come home from school, I want to hear everything. I want to know every detail because I love them and because I want to have an intimate relationship with them. And, and our, and our heavenly father is the same way. Mm-hmm. He cares about every little thing going on in our lives because he wants, he wants to have an intimate relationship with us. And, you know, if we can get our minds around the fact that God wants intimacy with us, right. I think that really opens up this, it opens us up to the desire to, Pray anytime and pray everywhere. Yeah, and that is absolutely true. I so agree with that. The co- like I, we, we talk about this a lot in uh, this season of prayer is that prayer is the direct connection to God. It is our conversational link, if you will. Um, and a lot of people that you know claim to be Christian, they don't really pray. And if they claim to pray, it's always approaching God to ask for something, you know, and Mm -hmm. like with me, I'm blessed. I I don't need anything else, you know, in the, in this life right now, you know, in this current state. Right. And I'm so happy for that. But you would think, well, what's the point of praying? Well, I thank God for the things that I have and the things that I'm able to do and my health and I'm not wealthy, so I can't say wealth. Um, (laughs) but (laughs) Just all the things that God has blessed me with and is currently sustaining these blessings in my life as we speak. I'm thanking God for that. But I'm also asking that he would forgive my wretched, dark, black, charcoal soul because I'm an ignorant ingrate and I'm selfish. You know, so I'm going before the father asking and repenting of my sins. Well, guess what, people? That's praying. (laughs) You don't always have to ask God for things. You can praise God. You can ask for forgiveness, which we should daily. Actually, every millisecond we should be asking for it. But because of God's merited grace, he gives us, you know, that freedom to, I guess, pick and choose when and where we should pray. But I, I don't I don't want the listeners to take that for granted, if you will. Right. Well, and I think, you know, most of a lot of a lot of your listeners, if they're anything like like my friends, you know, they they are they probably wrestle with the question, what is God's will for my life, right? 
Amen. And I mean, how many of us? I mean, we we all do, right? And so we go back to that to that that First Thessalonians, you know, passage. We give thanks in every situation because this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Right. I mean, right. The, you know, pray the, this praying, rejoicing always, praying without ceasing, giving thanks in every situation. Like this is God's will. Yeah, and then this is God's will for you. You get this the, is God's will for you. You get people that will and and. I don't like talking about politics on the show, but I'm going to use politics. You get people that complain. Oh, you know, this is going on. I don't like the president. I don't like this person. Yada, yada, yada. And my response is not to agree or disagree with them. My response is, are you praying for them? Because, yeah. you know, in one of my earlier episodes, um, we did the question, does prayer change things? You know, and if mm. we're not praying to God about these people and that God would protect these people and then God would change the hearts of these people, then this country is going to continue going down a downward spiral because you'll get the Republicans, the Democrats, the liberals, you'll get everybody fighting against each other. And within those specific groups, Republicans, Democrats, libertarians, whatever, you have a strong core group of Christians, but the Christians are missing the point when a person is elected and they don't like that person, well, guess what? You can change it. You may not be able to change it, you know, in that time frame because they're elected in that position, but you can sure pray that God would have his hand on their hearts to make the right decision. Yep. You know? And, this- and, yeah. Well, and, and I think what's so interesting too about that, Brandon, is that it, you know, politics and all these kinds of things, they tend to show, they tend to be the display of, of integrity for people you know did you you didn't like the the last president well did you were you praying for him no oh okay so you're only going to pray for presidents you like oh okay all right got you right um and that tells me everything i need to know right i mean this is and so this this again goes to that pray always pray anywhere pray everywhere thing right i mean because no matter who's in power, whatever leaders are in power, in, in whatever level of government we're talking about, mm-hmm. we are commanded to pray. Like we are, we are commanded by Scripture to pray for them yes. and to pray for their success and to pray for their well-being. And you know, and and, and I know a lot of Christians. For you know, well, President Obama was was leading this country. They didn't want to pray those things, and a lot of them refused to. And I know a lot of Christians now with President Trump don't want to pray those things and refuse to. And it's like, well, wait a minute. If that's the case, then you are, then you, we are not following through with what the scriptures have called us to do. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, it's problematic. And, and, pr- and prayer is one of those places where, where we begin to see where our hearts really are and, and where, you know, what, what our hearts are really about. And, and it, it's hard to hide from that. Yeah, and I'm going to make a bold statement, and I'm probably going to either lose listeners or, you know, get a few nasty messages for saying this. But when God raises up leaders, he puts them in place. And they're in place because of his will and for a reason. And when he's ready, he tears them down. Yes, in America, we have a system where the president can only serve two terms, which is a total of eight years. But and and. You know, God lets the government do its thing. But if God didn't want a specific person in office, they're not going to be in office if we're like them or not. You know, and I have to keep reminding people that it is God who raises up leaders. Why don't you pray to God in an angry voice and ask him why? And then maybe he'll show you why he's picking this person. Yep. But enough about politics. Um, (laughs) Enough about politics. That's a rabbit hole we could go down, I'm sure, for for hours and hours, my friend. (laughs) Oh, it probably gets both in deep trouble. So. Yeah, you, you're right. You're absolutely right. You know, one of one of the things oh. that um, I'm I'm working with the EPC with, um, and I, I'm I'm actually going to Florida in April, right before my presbytery, and I'm going to meet with. Uh, there's a team put together called the Revelation Seven Nine, and it, it, it clicked in my head because you brought up a point about Christian people praying for certain presidents, certain people. Um, And whatnot. So with that being said, you have the Revelation 7-9 group that is working to get the EPC to look more like Revelation 7-9. 
to look mm. more diverse, to look like heaven, if you will, blacks, whites, Asians, yeah. Mexicans, you know, that whole nine yards. Yeah. Let's go ahead and dive into scripture. Um, I want to take a look at first yeah. John five, 14 through 15. And I'm going to go ahead and read that for us. And let's see. And this is the confidence that we have heard him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And then verse 15 says, and if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that he, that we have the request that we have asked of him. So how does that tie into our question? Well, I think, I, I think that that passage in conjunction with um, First Thessalonians five seventeen. Well, I I I, I think with Romans. Um, ah. I feel like everything always comes back to Romans, right? <laughs> um, where Paul says, you know, that that we do not even know how we ought to pray. So the Spirit is is praying on our behalf with groans that we don't even understand, right? Right. Um, right. And so, because because in this first John passage, you know, he says that if we ask anything in agreement with His will, so how do we, you know, how how are we finite, the finite creation, going to know the mind of the Father a, apart from what He's revealed in Scripture? Because His revealed will is is really all we know. And, and, and oftentimes, as we're praying, we are we are praying and we are beseeching Him, and we are we are coming to Him. Uh, when in, in areas that we don't, we don't really, we don't really know His will, you know, because it hasn't been revealed yet. And so, how do we? You know, so, what are what are we doing there? Because we, if we're not praying in accordance with His will, then then we can't we can't say, you know, well, then we have it. Like that. This is where the name it claim it folks get it wrong, right? It's not whatever we ask for; it's what we ask for in accordance with God's will. And, and thankfully, the Holy Spirit is praying on our behalf because we don't even know what we ought to be praying for. Hmm. And, and, so, and so this kind of goes back to the very beginning of our conversation, right, of having, having a posture before the Father of, of humility and, and really seeking to humble ourselves and submit ourselves to the Spirit at, at work in us. And, and, so, and so that, you know, so I think as, as we do that then, you know, we begin to catch these glimpses. But even in the context of our confidence, we also need to have humility because there is that caveat uh, right. that we need to be asking for things in agreement with God's will. That is true. I guess I'm not going to get that so. Chevy Camaro then. <laughs> <laughs> Brother, I have been praying for a Jeep Wrangler my whole life, and I still haven't got it. Um, what am I doing so wrong? I, I, <laughs> well... You know, you, you've heard you've heard about the little boy that stole the bike, right? Yeah, that wasn't me though. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just being, I'm kind of wondering maybe that's how it's supposed to work, right? Maybe I should go steal a Jeep Wrangler and then ask God for forgiveness. You do, um, you do know you're talking to a <laughs> cop, right? <laughs> I, I know, right? I'll be seeing you. I'll be seeing you with them handcuffs sooner than later, I guess. <laughs> maybe, maybe I won't do that. Maybe maybe I'll just maybe I'll just keep waiting, and trusting that the Lord will. Who knows? Someday, someday, maybe it'll come. But uh, I, I have a feeling that uh, my finances, just like yours, are probably going to go someplace other than uh, mm -hmm. things that are going to rust. And, uh, and, and the moth destroy. So. Yeah, I think my finances are going toward, you know, upkeeping the house and you know, a little bit of yes, cost to the podcasting and stuff like that. So, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, well, hey, Brandon, I I need to run, my friend. All right. Um, I Boy, I have, I have thoroughly enjoyed our conversation. Thank you for the opportunity to, to get on here and talk with you and uh, talk about prayer, man. I, I love it, and I love I love what you're doing with your podcast, and uh, I am I am going to be listening. Yeah. Before I let for you sure. go, before I let you go, let's yeah. let's uh, we're going to do two things: close in prayer, and then we're going to tell people how to find you. Sounds so. like a plan. Sounds like a plan. All right. Let's why, don't, why don't you close us, and then and then I'll tell us where people can find me. How's that sound? All right, that works. Dear Heavenly Father, I want, to, All right. I want to thank you so much for this time that we've had together to discuss prayer. And Lord, I hope that this podcast would help people understand that you don't need a certain place to pray and you don't need a certain time.